Nutrition in Plants Plants require various nutrients for their growth and development. They obtain these nutrients from the air and the soil. The essential mineral nutrients required by plants are classified into two groups, macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are required in large quantities and include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium and sulfur. Micronutrients are required in small quantities and include iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum and chlorine. Plants obtain carbon dioxide from the air and use it to carry out photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, plants also release oxygen into the atmosphere. Water and mineral nutrients are absorbed by the roots from the soil. The process of absorption is called absorption. The nutrients in the soil are dissolved in water to form a soil solution. The root hairs of the plant absorb the water and dissolved nutrients from the soil solution. The water and nutrients are transported from the root hairs to other parts of the plants through the xylem vessels. Sunlight is required for the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which autotropic plants make their food. It involves the conversion of carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen using the energy from the sun. The process takes place in the chloroplasts of the plant cells. Insectivorous plants obtain their nutrients by trapping and digesting insects. Parasitic plants obtain their nutrients from other plants. Saprophytes are plants that obtain their nutrients from dead and decaying organic matter. Nutrients in the soil are replenished through various processes such as the decomposition of dead organic matter, weathering of rocks and nitrogen fixation by certain bacteria. Farmers use fertilizers to add nutrients to the soil to enhance plant growth. Autotropic plants are self-sufficient and do not require other organisms for their nutrition. Heterotropic plants obtain their nutrition by consuming other organisms. Plants are classified into different types based on their mode of nutrition. The roots of the plants play a vital role in the absorption of water and minerals from the soil. The process of absorption is a passive process. The plant root system is responsible for anchoring the plant firmly in the soil. The leaves of the plant are responsible for photosynthesis. The stem of the plant supports the leaves and other parts of the plant.
the flowers of the plant are responsible for reproduction plants are essential for the survival of animals and humans plants provide food shelter and oxygen to other living beings plants play an important role in maintaining the ecological balance plants help in the process of soil formation the soil is an essential resource for the growth of plants the quality of the soil determines the quality of the plants grown in it the ph of the soil affects the availability of nutrients to the plants acidic soil is not suitable for the growth of many plants soil erosion is a major problem that affects the fertility of the soil crop rotation is a practice that helps in maintaining the fertility of the soil the quality of the water used for irrigation affects the growth of the plants contamination of water sources can affect the health of plants and humans plants can be used as indicators of environmental pollution air pollution can affect the growth of plants deforestation is a major cause of soil erosion and loss of biodiversity climate change is affecting the growth and survival of many plant species plants are also used for medicinal purposes many plants have medicinal properties that are used to treat various diseases traditional medicine system rely heavily on plants for their treatments in conclusion plants play a vital role in the ecosystem and are essential for the survival of all living beings understanding their nutrition and growth processes is important for maintaining the ecological balance and ensuring sustainable development activity question explain an activity to test the presence of starch in leaves aim to test the presence of starch in leaves materials required two potted plants of the same kind a black box iodine solution dropper water test tubes procedure take two potted plants of the same kind keep one plant in the dark for 72 hours and keep the other in sunlight after 72 hours take a few leaves from both the plants perform the iodine test by applying a few drops of iodine solution using a dropper on the leaves of both plants observe the color change in the leaves leaves of the plant placed in sunlight will turn dark blue color with iodine leaves of the plant kept in the dark will not change into a blue color leave the pot which has earlier kept in the dark in the sunlight for 3 to 4 days after 3 to 4 days take a few leaves from this plant and perform the iodine test again the leaves will turn to blue color showing the presence of starch 
observation leaves of the plant kept in sunlight will turn dark blue with iodine solution indicating the presence of starch leaves of the plant kept in the dark will not show any color change indicating the absence of starch after leaving the plant kept in the dark in sunlight for 3 to 4 days the leaves will turn to blue color indicating the presence of starch conclusion this activity confirms that the leaves of a plant produce starch in the presence of sunlight through the process of photosynthesis precautions use fresh and healthy leaves for the test do not use too much iodine solution as it can damage the leaves handle iodine solution with care as it can stain clothes and skin ensure that the plants are kept in a controlled environment and not exposed to any external factors that may affect the results of the test